say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. I'm Tim Farmer. And I'm Tim Farmer. No, I'm Nikki <laughs> Farmer. <laughs> We've never done it open like that. No, That's kind don't of do that to me. Don't That's mess me up. <laughs> you know, uh, speaking of messing up, we went out the other day and we heard a, a noise, like a high-pitched lamb noise. <laughs> a lot of people like it when we go out and walk around the farm mm -hmm. and see the animals, so on and so forth. So we're going to do that right now. Let's go visit because five turned into... Nine. And today we got another surprise. Take a look at this little picture right here. Now we're at 11. I yeah. found those wet in the field, so they were just born. They were just born today, and it's in the 30s, so we got them inside their little enclosure, which we'll talk about in a minute, and milkweed's on deck. Yeah, we've got to get her in a pen, too. Yeah, she's looking mighty close. We're going to have lambs, <laughs> Babies everywhere. lambs, lambs. And they are so cute. Let's take a look at them right now. All right, now, here, now this, this could go completely, totally wrong, I'm not sure, but here's one of the most fun parts. When these little lambs have been cooped up with their mom, and the mom wants to sit once they get out. She's ready. Today. Yeah, she's ready. And we want to put these in here for three or four days to let them get used to their, to their lambs. Because right. when they start all lambing at one time, dropping a bunch of lambs, there can be confusion if it happens at the same time. So this can be awful cute now. I don't know if it's going to work out or not, but when we open this up, and these little lambs have their first taste of open ground. They tend to flip their heels. They're happy. Now they'll probably all just sit right here and nobody <laughs> come out. So anything weird can happen. Now milkweed and myrtle, it's going to be their big. turn yeah, next. Yeah, they look big. Now that's a little ram we kept from last year. We, we're going to let him breed. But Mavis wants out bad, so we're just going to pull this out out and watch, uh, watch and see what happens. Come on, Mavis, let's go. Come on. Now listen to, listen to the mama call. You're all right. Now listen to the confusion. Now the other the other big lambs are gonna check them out. Here comes mama. Say here I am. Here I am. Uh, she's now like I'm loose. Here's their first walk of freedom. <laughs> Let's see what happens. If you want, Nikki, go ahead and let mama me out. Now, mama me is pretty shy. It may take her a while to come on out. Aren't they cute? She has babies that occasionally that look like Holstein calves. <laughs> Once you start being around these animals, you understand their language. Each one has a different voice. <coughs> Just like that. If I'd have heard that one, I'd have absolutely known that was Myrtle. Look at Milton checking out these babies. Milton's always nice to the babies. You know, and look, Mavis is not the least bit concerned because no. she knows he's harmless. Remember last year we had lambs and they played with Milton. Mm -hmm. Everybody loved, they sleep with yeah. Milton. And he'll take up with them and actually run around with them. Now watch, watch them being protective. They're always mean. Now these, some, sometimes it's that little ram, he'll go ram into the babies. And you think, you think they're going to hurt him, they don't. But it's interesting how everybody gets together in the beginning. There they go. <laughs> now that's what's cute. Now if you look up Katahdins, there's all kinds of variations of color. You got dark, you got white, because they are ultimately a mix of a lot of breeds, but that is not an uncommon coloration, that dark coloration. You can get everything from solid white 
to the browns to even a reddish color. And one of those reasons we have katahdins is because they're fairly maintenance free. Just worm them and take care of the hooves. Make sure they got good food to eat and you can have bouncy lambs all over the place pretty quickly. Now the two black ones are boys, Mario and Marco. Now the two white ones are girls. They, they came out, they were born bigger than the girls. They get a little confused who their mother is, don't they? Yeah, and that's, you know, just, just see how Mama Mia ran yeah. that other way? They don't take care of anybody that's not theirs. And that's the way the farm works. Aren't they cute? You can go from a few to a lot in a short amount of time. We're going to double shortly. Now, Millie has not been around babies, you know, so... She better be good. She better be good. That's all I got to say about that. Because there are dogs that will chew on legs, chew on ears, so on and so forth. Now, she's, we've trained her around chickens. She was pretty rough on chickens, right. just to be real. You have to, sometimes you have to train these animals to what they got to do. Once they're there, they're there. Yeah. So we're putting a lot of trust in her. So now they get to have all kinds of fun and run. And Big jump. field. They'll probably go back in the barn tonight. I guarantee they will. But where they're used to sleeping. All right, now I've been hearing about this and wanting to try it for a long time. And Kelly has been telling us about spaghetti squash. She's made a few recipes that look good. Yeah. So I decided I'm going to take some of our pasta recipes that we do anyway, easy mm -hmm. stuff, and we're going to try this tonight. But first, where do you get something like that? I want to go somewhere where I know where my food comes from. Right. So let's go shopping real quick because we need several items here. Yes, we do. Let's go take a little walk around our favorite store. Okay. <laughs> Lauren, we're at a favorite store. Tim, yes. Welcome. And Kelly, who's behind the camera over there, she always talks about spaghetti squash. Uh huh. Love spaghetti squash. And everybody's asking about sp spaghetti squash because recipes. Because it is so delicious. It's good for you. Right. And it's a really nice alternative if you're trying to cut wheat or pasta out right. of your diet. Right. And it's really simple to do. You can. I've heard of people microwaving it. I've heard of people doing it in the oven. Which way do you do it? It's going to be in the oven. Okay. That's the way I do it too, because I like to get little roasty edges around it to add a little extra flavor. You know, we've talked about this before, but when I was a kid, we went to the store, we didn't know where anything came from. Right. It, I don't even think they had it print down on the can. Today, you can walk into the store and say, ooh, that came from Casey County. Exactly. Or that came from here and that came from there. When we were kids, mm -hmm. you knew the guy who brought your milk. You knew right. where the milk came from. You right. can do that here. Yes. We know where it comes from. <laughs> you can put a face to it. And it's got that cream on the top. Ooh. So good. And we gotta have some of that today. And we're looking for some bacon. Yes. I'm sure we got some local bacon. Oh, we've got some good bacon, yeah. We can we can set you up. <laughs> well I'll tell you what, we're gonna just shop around. It's so good to meet you, so good yeah. to have you on board. Great to have you guys and, in the uh, store again. We're going shopping. Okay, let's You can't go. stop us, we're out of control. <laughs> Load up the basket. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're looking at eggs. Yes. All right, now, <laughs> to me, it's fascinating. Look, just, let's just look and see. Where, okay. where are they from? All right, so we've got Chelsea's eggs, which is out of Pleasureville, Kentucky. That's uh, off the Dutch right Creek Farm. The, Henry County. You guys are so close yeah. to that. Um, we've got Centerfield eggs, which uh, from the Palisades pasture, they call it, out of Nicholasville. A couple here from uh, Lexington. We've got um, Evermore Farm, and they have duck eggs and chicken eggs. Yeah. How about that? If you've never tried the duck eggs, they're... You say really rich and delicious, right? Yes. We also have these eggs out of Lexington. I think a friend of yours, Todd Clark. Yes, he's been on the show. Yes, and beautiful eggs. Look at how rich the color is. And in wintertime, it's sometimes hard to have regular production of eggs. Right. So the people that are getting us these local fresh eggs know what they're doing. They, they don't sure want to keep do. their, their hens happy. Because our hens are like hit and miss. Yeah. <laughs> so I need some of those today. Because, okay, there you cause, go. Because they're hitting and missing. Mostly missing. <laughs> Mostly missing. You and need milk. good eggs. We talked about milk yes. with the cream on top. Yes, with the uh, the whole milk. Oh, yeah. You can see that cream cap, they call it. Oh, yeah. And this is JD's milk, and it's out of Russellville, Kentucky. People Look at that. come from all over to get the JD's milk. And just like the milkman, when, when you were a kid, um, you can come back and bring this glass carton back. You pay a deposit when you buy it. You bring the carton back, get Just your like money back, days. and then buy your next one. Now here's the deal. Tell me if this is, is solid logic. I need calcium For your to heal my bones. So in order to have calcium, I have to drink milk. Yes. In order to drink milk, I probably should get some cookies. Obviously. You think the Obviously. logic stands? Yes. All right, what about cookies? We, cookies. <laughs> we got a lot of cookies. Let's talk about cookies here in a minute. <laughs> okay. All right, let's pop these in a card. 
Lauren, 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 don't forget the cookies. Is that, is that a fried <laughs> apple pie? This is. It's a no, homemade no, turnover. No. It's, it's peach, though. Perfect. Peach. And Ken, a.k.a. Uncle Kenny, makes these by hand. He delivers them every couple days. He's just right down the road in Harrodsburg. You are kidding me. They're really, really, really good. You think Uncle Kenny would do a show with us? I think he probably would. I love Uncle Kenny already. I'm really annoying. Add it to the cart. All right, we're adding it to the cart. All right, we've got breakfast. We've got the main course. Yep. We've got dessert. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I'm out of a mouth of coffee. Coffee, you which you need for dessert right. or for the, the right. morning after that big meal. Um, we've got so many great local coffees, but one that I know is a hit because we've sampled it before is this Magic Beans, which is made right here in Lexington. This stuff is good. You're going to like it. Just give All it a whiff. is covered. <laughs> yeah. I would shake your hand if I could, but I'll just say thank you very much. Well, thank you for coming by. Enjoy and your meal. We're good to go. All right. I like the real milk. <laughs> Me too. Thanks so much. <laughs> All right, now the preparation for this is fairly easy, and I'm sitting down, we're sitting down again because I don't have to wear a sling. Yeah. And thank you all for asking about my broken arm. It is getting better, hopefully. I'll know more tomorrow. Okay, let's cut this in off till it's square. Not too okay. much, just a little just bit. Just a little bit. You gotta kind of like saw that. it off there. Yep, same on the other. Now that's, that's the harder side where the stem was. So now what I would like you to do, Nikki, if you can, is cut that almost exactly in the middle. There you go, just saw it back and forth. Got it. All right. Now what we're gonna do is just scoop these insides out just till you get down to the meat of it. Just take the seeds and the, just make a little bowl. Now, if you haven't tried this, and a lot of people have, it's kind of a trendy thing right now, and it's really kind of cool. The whole thing is kind of something you don't expect. So if you're on a low carb or gluten-free diet or any of those types of things, this is your excuse to have pasta. All right, I've got my Salt, pepper, and garlic here that I always keep around. You can't hardly go wrong. I always keep some mixed up. Now, if you will, Nikki, put me some olive oil in there. All right, all over, inside too. Yep, and we're just gonna brush that in, kind of seal all our stuff in there. You could have gone it the other way too. You could have gone the salt and pepper first, but it doesn't matter. Now we're gonna set these face down. Now, if they were canoes, they'd be upside down. We're gonna set our oven for 375. And we're gonna go from 45 minutes to an hour on this. Okay. And you're gonna be surprised what happens when it comes out. So let's go ahead and, and pop those okay. in, if you will. All right. Wow, that's cooking. You made something, I love your dips. Now, your, your crab dip that you make. That's your oh favorite. Oh my goodness. I could, I, could, I could live on that. Really, Barry Gibb? Really who? <laughs> Barry Gibb, that's who you're starting to look like. Barry Gibb. Uh huh. I mean, you kind of look like Barry Gibb. Just, I just, it just came to me. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Talk about my From crab. From the Bee Gees. Dip. Yeah, you look like a Bee Gee right now. <laughs> you look like a Bee Gees. Just let your hair go a little longer. Okay. Broken like man. Okay, that's good. Back How can I lose her? Have you? Back to the crib. Let's cut around you. Okay. Barry Gibb. Okay. You just kind of, you just hit me. I just, I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. You know who you look like? Samantha Sang. Who's that? She sang with Barry Gibb one time. Oh, really? Look it up. Oh, okay. Can we have some disco music in the background? Ready? One, two, three. How about we call this disco dip? Oh, disco dip. I like disco that. Disco dip. Since <laughs> since you're Samantha Sang. And, and you're very good. Since you're yeah. making disco dip tonight, what uh? What's in my disco What is dip? it? Give me the overview. I know it was good. It's artichoke spinach dip, but it's called disco dip now. Disco dip. I just kind of put artichoke spinach. We're going to put onions, Swiss cheese, cream cheese, every, all your favorite everything. Just and let it cook. All right, you ready for all my onions? Yep. All right. All right, our onions are going. Show me how much spinach, spinach you want. Do a whole, do a whole, uh, fill it up. Just do a whole. Fill it up? Yeah. Like this whole Like that, because it gets, it gets pretty little. It's down pretty good. Yeah. And while you're doing that, I got me some artichokes all right. in a can, and they were just kind of got that oil on them kind of flavor, and I'm just going to chop them up a little bit. You could probably do all this in a blender if you wanted. We had this the other night. It was really good. Yeah. Let's chop these up a little bit. Yeah. All right, we're getting close here. Where are you going? All right, mine's simple. I got cream cheese here. And I kind of tried to let it get a little bit room temperature. Whole bar. You don't cream have to. Cheese. Yeah, that's the best stuff. So much for our rest. Well, you know what? We may as well have one unhealthy dish tonight, huh? That's not bad. And I'm going to go ahead and throw all these artichokes in there and just kind of, and you can put this all in a blender. Some people like to, or just a mixer, mix it up. I like, I like chunks. Yeah, I want chunks too. And I'm just going to kind of mix it with a fork. And whenever your spinach is ready, you can throw that in. Oh, really? Yeah. 
and we're going to throw some. Well, that'll kind of loosen your cheese up a little bit. Are you ready? Go ahead. Yeah, I could use if that. If I hold the pan up, you get the wooden spoon. Yep. Right, Perfect. Here we go. Now you already imagine what you got going on here. Yeah. The flavors. Those things combine nicely. I'm going to use that skillet again. All right. How about some of your salt and pepper and garlic too? That's. I will help you out with that. Kind of, and I like Swiss cheese, so I have probably a cup and a half of Swiss cheese here. I'm going to throw it in. You grated that a minute ago. Yeah, I did. I like. I love Swiss cheese, and that's a lot of cheese, but that's what makes it good. What do you think? Oh, I love any kind of cheese. <laughs> I'm just going to mix that up. Oh man. Put it in the pan, and we'll get a little more salt and pepper. Oh, this is mostly pepper and garlic. All right. I want to cook about a half hour. We can look at it. You can let it get a little browner, but remember the other night we got oh, it out early because you guys were ready to start. It was bubbling and you wanted to eat it. You know, there's all kinds of sports events coming up. Everybody's having parties. This is perfect year-round type to eat deal. that. So what do you do from this I'll point? I'll put it in this pan. All right. And that's it. Let's just... Oh, smell that. Yeah. Let's just... You can eat it right now. Oh, that smells good. You could have put mushrooms or anything, but... I, and how long are you going to let that go for? Let's check it after a half hour, and if it's so if you're starving, we'll eat it. Yeah. Oh. Right? Let it go longer and let it brown up and put this in the oven. All right. Okay, we say we're going to use the same pan a lot tonight. Go ahead and toss me some onions in there, if you will. All these? Yep. There's so many things you can do with a spaghetti squash, and you can leave enough of the original shell there to use it as a boat, which we're going to do tonight. We're going to make two different recipes. You can make 500 different things. You can do Alfredo. You can do chicken. You can do anything you want. And just pretend like that's your pasta. Yeah. Now, if you will, go ahead and pop those little pieces of garlic in there. I'll press them out in here. We're going to have some onions, some shallots, some garlic. We're just going to turn that over. Again, don't brown your garlic too much. All right. Now, first of all, I'm going to just kind of a little red wine. Yeah. I'm going to go a heaping, eh, let's just say a tablespoon of basil pesto. And I like some extra dry oregano. And guess what? Lots of it. And we had pretty good tomato crop last year. Now this is going to be enough for you and me, so I'm just going to do, let's do one. one. Take just a little bit of tomato paste, thicken it up just a hair. And that's a real quick and easy. Just tomato based. Tomato sauce. based. That's and if you, if a lot of times the acid gets you, there's too much tomato in there. It's an old, I mean a legit old chef told me a lot of people can really freak out. But just a little bit of sugar if you want some sugar? That. And we'll let that simmer for just a few minutes. All right, you ready? Mm-hmm. All right, grab one of them. We've let these cool now. That looks good. All right, now look what happens when we go in here to pull this out. So that's going to be our... That's our pasta. Our pasta. Look at that. Just like Yum. strands of spaghetti. We're going to take our spaghetti sauce. Put it right in yeah. there. This is kind of a tried and true sauce that i come up with over the years. It's Always my favorite. Good. Now, what we're going to do? What are you going to do? Cheese. I love cheese. Parmesan cheese. Yum. All right, pop that in if you will. 350, just till your cheese starts to melt because we're ready to go. All right, if you'll cut me some long... Thin onion strips. I'm going to take some large marge bacon. All right, so we're going to take our onions, Yummy. pop those in the bacon grease. Yum. I poured a little bit of that off. We just need a little bit of bacon grease. Now we're going to drop in some spinach. How much you want? I want probably more than we have in this bowl. Is there more than this? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit more because that's really going to melt now. Okay. Oh, it smells good. Does that not smell good? It does. All right, now just a little bit of pepper in here. Do you want to go ahead and get the squash? Get that squash ready. I'm going to take a little ricotta cheese and put it in here. Just let it soften up. Let it get nice and mixed up with that. I'm going to take our fork and start doing the same thing. Yum. Is that not cool? I can't wait to try it. Look at that. It's just like spaghetti. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take this, plop Yum. it right in over here. <laughs> oh, that smells so good. Now, as if it couldn't get any better, let's put that bacon on top. Now we got to come back with some Parmesan cheese on top of that because you just have to. That looks good. There it is. Pop it in the oven too? Pop it in, let it get brown, and the spaghetti one should be done. 
So, let me try your disco dip. Want some disco dip? With these cute little pieces of bread, I'll put some on there. I know it's gonna be hot. Ooh, look at the steam. Look, look at, now look at that. Now how okay. can you go wrong? Swiss cheese and cream cheese. Salt and pepper. I might have too much on here. You said it's hot. Be careful. I know. I'm kind of in love with that. Mm-hmm. That's good. Wow. <laughs> this is absolutely wonderful. I'm glad you mm. like it. Let you have the first. They're too pretty. I mean, look how pretty that looks. I hate Isn't that either. nice? So I want to get down in there. It's own natural oh, wow. little boat. That's delicious. <laughs> and it's got bacon on top. It's like you're having spaghetti. Let me get, my, get some uh, pasta out there. Look at that. Wow. Now there's there's the bite. There's the perfect bite right there. Look, it's got the bacon. It's got a big onion hanging off. Al dente, fake pasta. I see you. No gluten. How is it, Barry Gibb? Wow. I can't believe we haven't tried this till now. That's amazing. No. Now that one tastes like you're eating spaghetti. <laughs> it really well, does. Well, it's a spaghetti squad. Wow, that is good. You know what we need? We don't have is a drink. Yes, we do. Now, every drink does not have to have alcohol. Some people don't drink, and that's right. all fine and good. But if you don't, if you want to mix a drink for yourself or your kid, mm -hmm. it's called a mocktail. Mocktail. A mocktail would be good right now. That sounds yummy. Let's try it. Okay. is back with fruit. <laughs> Lots of it. This looks interesting. I can't wait to see what you've got here. Yeah, so this is a drink called Freckle Juice, and this is going to be a, a mocktail. Ah. So the kiddos can have this there for sure. You go. So you get some sliced peaches in a can, which makes this very easy. You can, of course, double this recipe. We're just going to do half. So about half of the can. So mandarin oranges and peaches and mm -hmm. bananas. I got a banana How could you over beat here. That? Break it in two. All right. A can of, or a bottle, I'm sorry, of L8. We're gonna add a little bit of crushed ice, which I made with your old fashioned ice, ice mat. mat. <laughs> I love that thing. All right, so it's as simple as that. I'm also just gonna add a little bit of lemon juice. If you don't like lemon, you don't have to do this, but you can also use store bought lemon juice, but I like to use the, the, fresh real, the real stuff. You might even let the kiddos squeeze this because it's kind of fun to do. No seeds. <laughs> the kiddo art. No seeds that uh, way. No, no seeds this way. It's as easy as that. That was just half a lemon. It's going to be about three tablespoons if you use the store-bought. This lid on nice and tight. Turn. Use that easy more. as that. <laughs> Mike, look how easy that was. Fantastic. And woo, easy for the open. Now you could add some more ice if you want in here. That really smells like. Doesn't it? That's almost like a dessert. Woo. It's a little messy for sure. Doesn't that look that. delicious? That's almost like a smoothie. Thank you so much for a wonderful idea. Thank you. One of the subtleties I just picked up here is, is when you roast that squash with the olive oil, mm -hmm. that's a nice taste in itself. Now we tried that just by itself. That's edible just like that. It's really I could make good. a meal of that, right. but when, you know, why not just go crazy? Yeah. If you have seen these recipes and you think, well, wow, that's pretty cool. I wonder if they have any more. Well, I'll bet we do. Where can you find them? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. That's right. Click YouTube. Boom. Hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands, maybe billions. If you'd like to be our Facebook friend, all you have to do is go to our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Click like. Boom. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's all about good times, good friends, and really good eats. And good eats. We'll see you next week with a brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Let's dig in. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.
Special thanks to CKY Canoe Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm, 